Welcome to the Sandbox Comprehensive Player Model Guide. I'm Grotbert and today we'll be diving into animation blending and movement. Now, if you don't already have a model, you can go download the folder from the description and place it in your Projects Assets Models folder. Otherwise, if you've been following the series, still do that, but choose to ignore the files that share names. Before starting, check the pinned comment to see if there's any correction. Sandbox is always changing, so some things may not apply since the release of this video. Here we've got our AniMGraph, currently it's either idle or walk, with no in-between of course, since they are two separate animations, but what if they weren't? You have three main ways to blend between poses, animation blending, bone masking and additive animations. Animation blending is very straightforward, it's the movements of two or more animations averaged out. We've actually seen this step already, when exiting a state in a state machine, the old pose is blended into the new state. On the right are the options, if you increase the time it takes to 2 seconds, you can see the blend in action. Bone masking allows you to make a waitlist of bones to determine which are going to be influenced by one animation and which by the other. For example, we can have a waitlist so the arms use the walk animation and bone mask them into the idol, and now he is swaying like a muppet. Lastly, additive animations, as the name implies, instead of blending an animation, you add one onto another. You take the motions of each bone and add them to the current pose. Take for example a breathing animation, layer it on top of a static pose and the model comes to life. However, if you thread this now, chances are it would explode. They can be very complicated to beginners, so stick around to learn how to use them. Let's start with a simple animation blend, add a new node, go to blend and select 1D blend. The D stands for one dimensional, so this can only go backwards or forwards, like a slider. We'll need a new parameter to control this, since the boolean just won't cut it. Luckily we have just the thing. As we learned in the last episode, float parameters have a minimum value, a max value and everything in between, which is just what we need. So create a new float and name it speed. Go ahead and set the max to 100. Now we can use this parameter for our 1D blend. However, we still don't have any arrow to connect our animations into. To add them, press this big blue cross, expand the list and name it idle. Then add an author and name it walk. Below them we can assign their values. Since our float goes up to 100, set the walk to 100. And now, if we start a simulation, our dude will go from an idol to a walk and everything in between. Huh, that's weird. What's with the tiny little steps? This is a characteristic of animation blending. The more different an animation is, the worse the blend will be. And although idling and walking may seem similar, the duration isn't. The 1D blend node sees the difference in length and tries its best to match them through this option here. The sync cycle. It slows down or speeds up the animations until their cycle matches. Results may vary, but it's not like turning this off will give you better results, it just means that it gives up trying. Try copying pasting the work animation and set the playback speed to 0.5. Ideally, this will result in a blend between a slow work and a frisky jog. But if we try it out, we see one animation is sped up with sync cycle, but without the two animations are fighting for control. Really, 1D Blend is only good for similar animations or blending static poses. I kinda dropped a very important term earlier, that being a cycle. As we've discussed, animations can have widely different lengths, either due to frame count or their playback speed, but an animation cycle is different. It starts at 0 and ends on 1. You can see what I mean by adding a new node, the cycle control node, if we use a float that goes from 0 to 1, select it as the parameter and connect it to walk, we can play around with the cycle of the animation. Ooh, ooh. The 1D blend was kinda failing to use cycle effectively, but this next node does not disappoint, as it is one of the most useful and powerful nodes. I'm talking about the 2D blend space. As the name implies, this blends in two dimensions, so not only back and forth, but also right and left. This is mainly used to make what we call 8-way movement, 
the golden standard for player models, since wasp movement only allows for up to 8 directions, those usually being named after the cardinal directions from a top-down view. Now go ahead and create a 2D blend node. This time we require two parameters, usually two floats named move underscore x for forward and move underscore y for right. So rename speed into move x and create a new float called move y with a max of 100 as well. Set the horizontal axis as move y since it's right to left and the vertical axis as move x since it's forward to backwards. Makes it easier to visualize, you'll understand what I mean as soon as we get into the node, because as you can see, it has a little arrow on the top right. Double press the node to enter it, and we are presented with a new workspace. Of course it's empty, you can now add your animation through this little running man. So let's start with walk north. We do have quite a few more to add though, speed up the process by adding multiple clips up here. Search for walk, and just select this tree for now, you can see the one we already have is grayed out. Also add the idle animation, ok this is annoying, for some reason the panels start squished. So much so you cannot even make out what this value on the left is. Drag this line to the right to reveal that it is the blend percentage and a little bit the rest as well. I guess if we have to fill out all of these values, I might as well explain how to do it right. If you've watched episode 0, you probably know this engine uses inches as units, and if you want to avoid foot sliding, you'll have to know exactly how fast your character ought to be moving. A great way to do that is for the blend value of an animation to be set as its speed in units per second. That's really complicated, but don't worry, because yes, we have a wizard that can do that all for you. We can use the root motion that we set up in model doc last episode and use this wizard to set all the values for us. If we were to press it right now, nothing would happen. That's because we're controlling this blend through parameters and it doesn't know what to make of it, but if we switch the axis control to something that uses root motion, like strafe speed for left to right, and then forward speed for the vertical axis, and then press the wizard again, the values will be set, and blue dots appear in the preview matrix below, and if you start a preview here, you can play around with them. Looks awesome, although for some reason the y axis is inverted. Huh. Something's wrong with Walk W. It's not blending correctly with the others. Remember when I said blending doesn't work well when an animation is too different? Well, I got lazy. Walk West is just a mirrored Walk East. So even though the right motions are there, they are in the wrong place. And that makes all the difference in the world. Look at the feet for example. If we start Walk E, you can see the right foot moves forward to make contact. That's the case for all of the animations too, but when mirrored, we see that the left foot moves forward first. How is it supposed to blend between those two? We can fix the timing by offsetting when the animation starts. In fact, if we go back to model doc, we can see that even the normal work animations are kinda different from the idle pose. Frame 10 looks like a better starting pose to go into a work. If you right click the node, you can add an anim start loop, which is what we'll use to change what frame to start animation in. Tap in frame 10, and now the first frame has changed, oh, what, I thought we had a treadmill, why is he walking off? We still do have the extract motion markup, but the problem is that it's applying the markups alphabetically. So first it's applying the position, and then it extracts the wrong motions. If you check this anim markup ordered box in the node, it will make sure they are instead applied by the order you place them. There we go, now go ahead and copy the anim start loop to all of the other work animations, make sure to check the anim markup ordered box as well. We still have to make the mirrored west animations match the correct timing. I find the easiest way to do so is to have a certain motion I can use to match the frames, some sort of event, a footstep event. The programmers need to know where to play a footstep sound. To do that, we embed anim events into an animation in model doc. There are many types, some make sounds, switch body groups, spawn particles, or in our case, makes a footstep. So go ahead and right click walk N, select add anim event, and from this list, search for footstep. You have a couple fields to fill now. The first is the attachment it uses. Attachments are empty points in space used to keep a position. In this case, we need one to let it know where the foot is. Add a new node, search for attachment, name this one foot underscore R. Select the right foot for the parent bone, copy and paste the attachment, call it foot underscore L, and change the parent to the left foot. Now back to the foot anim event. 
select the right foot attachment and of course set the foot as the right. Copy and paste the event and change everything to the left foot. Now to order them, here in the timeline you can slide the anime events. Let's see where the right foot lands. I say frame 10 and the left foot frame 26. Select both of these animation events and copy them over all of the walk animations. We can now see how offset those mirrored animations are. Seems the right foot steps at around frame 26. Oh, where the left would land? Of course, because it's mirrored. So I guess it's behind by 16 frames. Add 16 to the 10, so 26. And great, now the footsteps are aligned and the animation starts at an inoffensive neutral pose. Now do the same for walk NW and walk SW. And now we're back in the 2D blender. If we try it out, we see that everything blends perfectly. And all is fine in the world. Except for some reason, left and right is still inverted. Just remember to invert the first column. Phew! We are already at read time minutes into the video. Guess we gotta wrap it up quickly. We also have running animations, so go set those up in model doc. You should know the process by now, but if you're lazy just follow the montage, find a nice inoffensive frame for the start, usually a little after what the animators call the passing pause, frame 5 looks nice, then I set up the footstep events, would you look at that, frame 10 and 26, they match with the walk footsteps, as they should, always try to match the motions of your blends. Then I offset the mirror animations by adding 16, so plus 5 that's 21. Back to our 2D blend, delete all of the animations with the trash can, now add all of them back, walk, run, idle, and if we press the auto blend, hell yeah, oh, it's supposed to be a perfect circle. Why was south run given such a large value? Let's see in model doc, ah, it has a frame rate of 60 fps. While the others are only 24 fps, it's almost 3 times as fast, that's why it gave a bigger value. After seeing this, the others seem slow, I think 60 fps is better. So go ahead and change the frame rate to 60 frames per second, compile, back to the 2D blend, hit the auto blend again, invert the first column because I like it better that way, and change the axis control to use parameters. Remember move Y and move X, good times. Now if you start a preview, we are finally able to control our character through parameters. Oh right, I forgot it only went up to 100, the world seemed so small back then, our running animations got to 266 and even in the negatives now. So change the mean value in the parameter to negative 266 and the max value to 266. There we go, perfection. This saves so much time compared to setting it by hand, although that's not all the movement a player expects. Tune in next episode where we will add crouching, wherein you'll learn the fabled third type of animation blending, additive layers, and also the famous inverse kinematics.